is Tom Lynham, and I'm the uh, Global PPM Marketing Lead at Axelos. Um, and uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who has joined us for today's session. Um, so today um, we have a number of speakers um, uh, who I will introduce in, in a short moment. Um, but the plan is to speak for around about um, 40 um, minutes uh, and then open it out to uh, some questions um, after, after Keith has finished speaking. Um, if you do have any questions, then please do um, send them in via the chat and the Q&A box. Um, they are on the right-hand side of the panel. Um, that uh, when you uh, when you log in and, and, and looking at the, the screen, um, and, and please do send send those questions in um, as and when you um, when it, as when you think of them. Um, if you do have any issues as well, please do um, send those through via the chat or the Q and A box, and I will do um, my best to um, sort out whatever problems you might have on on today's session. Hopefully, there'll be um, very few, uh, if not none at all. Um, we will also be asking for some feedback at the end of today's session. Um, once you uh, close the session, uh, a pop-up box will appear, and uh, you, there's just four short answers, and I would encourage you to respond to those questions. Um, we do value the feedback that you send in, and it helps us to improve the, the webinars that, that we run, so please do send those, those in. Um, we are also recording today's session, um, and uh, we will be making that available um, to you. So um, if you do have any colleagues or friends you think would find today's session interesting, then please do um, forward them uh, a, a link, the link to the recording of today's session. Uh, and finally, we will be running a number of polls. Um, so uh, they're very simple. When you, when you uh, click into the, when, when I make them live, um, a, a box will appear, and it will just be very easy to, to fill those out, but I'll, I'll give instructions um, when, when we run those. Um, I have to apologize now if anyone is logging in with an iPad um, or, or similar device. Um, unfortunately, WebEx doesn't allow for, for the uh, polls to work on those devices, so uh, I'm afraid uh, you won't be able to partake in those. Um, so that leads me on to introduce uh, today's speakers. Um, and. Uh, Personally, I'd like to thank um, both of you for, for joining today. Um, I want to start uh, just by introducing Keith. So uh, Keith Richards is the founder and director of Agile KRC, a company that has specialised in bringing the benefits of Agile and Lean to organisations since the late 1990s. Um, Keith has more than 30 years' experience in IT and project management, and he was a trainer in Prince2 for nearly a decade. Uh, he's also an accredited DSDM advanced practitioner and trainer and an IAF accredited facilitator. Um, in 2006, he became the technical director of the DSDM consortium and in the following year led the team that created DSDM ATERN, uh, specializing in the pioneering approach to combining print, uh, Agile with Prince2. He authored the Agile project management running Prince2 with projects with DSDM ATERN uh, in 2007. Um, in 2011, um, he received the Most Valuable Agile Player at the UK Agile Awards, um, and most recently in 2014, he was selected by Axelos um, to be the lead author of Prince to Agile, um, which involved an international collaboration of more than 40 people and what um, Keith is um, covering in, in today's session. Um, but before I hand over to Keith, uh, I want to also uh, introduce uh, John uh, Alexiou, uh, who is uh, the Head of Marketing and Communications at PeopleCert, um, who is responsible for global best practice and testing solutions. Um, so without further ado, let me um, hand over to John um, before we move on to Keith. Thank you, Tom, for the introduction. Uh, we're really pleased to be hosting this event with you, and we couldn't be more excited about Prince2 Agile and the benefits it's bringing to the market already. So as um, Tom said, my name is John. I'm the head of marketing at PeopleCert, and I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. As some of you may know, PeopleCert is a strategic Axelos partner, delivering global best practice exams to over 150 countries worldwide. Since people said entered the PPM market, we have been transforming the way in which exams can be delivered. So this includes our award-winning online proctoring technology, which is completely in-house developed and managed, as well as other innovations, such as Instance Scan and Mac, for example, which provides instant results for paper-based exams. 
We're great supporters of all access qualifications, of course, and the benefits it brings to professionals and various organizations, and particularly for Prince to Agile, from day one we've been very vocal about its potential and the market need it addresses. In fact, since it launched this summer, we have already accredited over 50 organizations to deliver Prince to Agile training. Every day we're seeing increasing interest and demand from all over the world in this great new qualification, and we really can't wait to show you why in today's presentation. So without further ado, uh, and once again, thank you for joining us uh, today. I'll hand over to Keith and uh, enjoy the presentation. what Prince2 Agile is and um, try and give you information as I can in the time available. Uh, remember what uh, Tom said earlier about the questions, get your questions ready and I'll try and take as many as I can right at the end. In terms of the uh, structure of where we're going with the presentation, quite simply I'm going to give you the latest news, the reason for Prince2 Agile, uh, some of the basics behind it uh, and then we'll go into talking a little bit about some of the things in Prince2 Agile. Uh, remember it's a sort of three-day training course so I'm going to try and get uh, as much as I can through in, in a short time uh, to give you an idea of what's, what's in there. Uh, in terms of introductions, I'm going to skip this slide immediately. I'm going to be very agile and de-scope this immediately because uh, Tom has already done this. So if you're watching the recording or the slide deck, you can check back on that later if you, if you, if you want to. So the latest news on Prince2 Agile launched June 24th, so it hasn't been out that long, um, you know, not, not even yet sort of six months. So um, if you've heard much about it or you've heard a lot about it, in mind it is very new. It's still, if you like, still wet. Uh, many ATOs are up and running, just said there from the point of view of people cert. The course lasts three days. The exam is a two and a half hour exam and the exam is challenging. Uh, when I took on the uh, position that Axel asked me to do this, um, there were about three demands that, are, that I, I had, if you like. I, I called them requests and not demands, but one of them was that the exam had to be a challenge not ridiculously hard so you can't pass it and only a few people pass, but it couldn't be easy. I didn't want a, a sort of Mickey Mouse exam. There are too many qualifications in the Agile marketplace today that really do lack credibility when you look at um, you know, how the actual exam is, is structured. Now, I know the amount of work that Axelos have put into this exam and I know the level of difficulty it is and um, I'm not exactly sure of the pass rates, you know, 65, 70% maybe, that sort of mark, but it's not an easy exam. It's not a question of I need to drink a lot of coffee before the exam. You really do need to know um, your Prince2 and you need to know how to apply it in an Agile context. The manual is 340 pages. Uh, I'm still surprised it could turn out big, uh, mainly because we put a lot of information about Agile techniques in there and it's bigger than the Prince2 manual itself. Uh, lots of LinkedIn groups are appearing and there's a lot of debate about this. Uh, some of it is negative, um, some of it's positive, you know, and a lot in between. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with you to look at the debate and, um, you know, make your own decisions. But I'm a great believer that good debate uh, is, is um, good for Prince to Agile. It's just good in general. Um, just be careful. There's a lot of people who are quite prejudiced out there, um, and I'll come on to that in the presentation. Uh, Tom, just one quick thing. I'm getting a tiny bit of background noise. Does anyone need to mute their microphone? One of the um, part, um, one of the uh, presenters. Um, thank you very much for doing that. Right, what I'm going to do now is run a poll to get going. So, Tom, if you could run our first poll, and everyone on the uh, webinar today, I can you can give me some sort of key information about where you're thinking in terms of um, how you think Prince Two is in terms of your perception of Prince Two. Now, if you look on the uh, right-hand corner there, I, I believe uh, that you have some questions up there. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we, we're getting the responses in now, so um, getting lots of those come in. Um, already uh, about 60% of people have, have sent them in, so um, if you haven't, if, you, if you're one of the few who haven't, uh, please, I would encourage you to uh, send your responses in. Um, I'm just going to leave it open for another 15 15 seconds or so, um, just to let those who um, have uh, not responded yet uh, do so. Okay, great. Um, 
just going to close that poll. Um, and so it just takes a couple of seconds to process, and then I will share the results with with everyone. And, and Keith, I don't know if you you maybe want to want to comment. Um, I can't see the results myself yet, so if you read the numbers out, I can't actually see the poll on my screen. But uh, oh, that's good. Um, have you got them now? Um, yes, I have. Wonderful. So let me have a look there. Right, this is this is good. This is uh, this is absolutely ideal. Okay, that's great. Um, Tom, can I carry on there then? Yep, do please do. Right. Cheers. Um, now, very interesting poll results there. Remember, you can vote for more than one thing, and there's no right or wrong answer because this is about your opinion, your perception. But um, about sort of uh, in the order of 25% uh, of people are thinking it's bureaucratic and document driven, thinking it's waterfall. Even more, the highest score is command and control. But importantly, option D there. 20% uh, of the people on, on the webinar are saying, no, it's actually none of the above. And I just want to play with this uh, as we go through the, the slides because uh, there is what I call perception and there's reality. And those people who are picking D are probably saying, well, hang on, it's a framework. You can apply it exactly how you want. And that is uh, one of the points I want to try and bring out about Prince 2. I'm going to come, come back to that, but for those people who have said it's bureaucratic and document driven, it's waterfall, it's command and control, um, you just hold that thought for a while because uh, I want to see if I can challenge that and maybe uh, change your thinking on that as we go through. So what are the sort of drivers for uh, Prince2 Agile? Well, I apologise in advance that uh, the only picture I can even think of for drivers uh, consists of a load of F1 drivers, but the reason for Prince2 Agile out. And you remember some of the things that John was saying in the intro about uh, uh, the interest and the uptake. Well, it's primarily due to demand. Axelos went round uh, all their um, partners and asked them what sort of things they were looking for in terms of products. And the thing that came out top was some sort of agile guidance for Prince2. So it's demand driven. Um, another thing is agile is everywhere. A lot of people are talking about agile now in a project context. And really importantly, um, you have to understand that most Agile that you read about and learn about is not in a project context. It's in what's called a business as usual context where there is already a product that exists and there's modifications that need to go into it. Um, but this isn't the same as when someone has an idea and they need to start from scratch. So moving Agile into the project arena and not the product arena, which is where it uh, was born from, if you like, 2001, 2002, um, is people are looking for. And this is where Prince2 brings a lot of um, useful t tools and techniques and guidance to the party. And Prince2 Agile sort of brings even more. But remember, uh, the context of using a project and Agile can be, can be very different. And one of the most points about creating the guidance, and what the team struggled with initially, was the fact that there are different levels, if you like, of agile maturity that you face when you are turning up with Prince2 trying to run a project. So sometimes you might just find yourself in, a, in an environment where there's very basic agile. So for example, this would be personified by the Scrum framework, where you may have a um, series of sprints and a backlog of work that needs doing. But that's quite basic agile. A more mature and more sophisticated um, sort of agile modus operandi would be where people are talking about vision, people are talking about releases, um, people are talking perhaps about um, distributed agile. Maybe we've got a team in um, you know, one continent and another team in another. And in fact, you might be looking at almost no agile. A lot of Prince2 um, people that we canvas here, I would suggest a third have not really agile, but they need to go for it. One of the things the guidance does is to show you how to turn to different situations. You cannot just turn up with Prince2 and say, this is how I'm running it in this context. You have to understand whether it is a very basic Agile um, environment or whether it's quite mature. And you need to adjust uh, and tailor Prince2 to adapt to those situations. One of the things I really like on the LinkedIn group, uh, the LinkedIn, sorry, the LinkedIn groups and some of the debate is about people saying, you know, we don't really need this. And I think it's very interesting because 
Um, you know, do we need it? Well, not everybody likes change. Uh, not everything. Not everybody likes anything new. But something new coming out and something changing the way people think, uh, or something up to date, which I think Prince to Agile very much is, uh, is 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 very much sort of inherently agile, if you like. In the Agile Manifesto, there is a line that says, you know, responding to change. That's one of the main four values. So when something new happens and people sometimes say, well, I'm not so sure, um, you know, why would you say that? Isn't that exactly what uh, Agile is all about? It's very important to realize that Prince2 Agile is not actually compulsory. You don't have to do it. If you've got products working quite well in an Agile context, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, if you've invested quite a lot of time and effort and a lot of your staff understand Prince2 and you're looking to build on that, then Agile offers you something in that in that domain. Now, if you haven't got anything at all and you're just going out shopping in the method marketplace, you would certainly want to look at Prince2 Agile. But as I say, it's a framework. Um, it's for um, you know, it, it's it's not a question really of taste. It's if it's appropriate for you, then you might find that it's going to be very useful. If you're in a very um, um, sort of support environment and you've got an existing product, you know, it might not fit with a sort of project context. So this is what I'm saying, you know, do we need it? It's there, um, it's a way, it's not the way. Now, I think what the team has created is something really good, but as I say, different viewpoints are good, and um, if it uh, ticks the boxes you need, then, then off you go. So, in terms of the basics, in terms of what Prince to Agile is, and this is where we come back to the poll that we did earlier, some of these things may surprise you. But what the team were working on in the early stages and found quite difficult was trying to work out um, you know, what, what are facts and what are, if you like, feelings in the Agile marketplace. And we came up with these uh, eight, if you like, guidance points and some of them may be stating the obvious, so we've got many, many people on the webinar. Some of these I think you'll read and go, well, I knew that anyway, but some of you might think, oh, that, that is actually a surprise, and it's what we call myth-busting because that is the way we built a Prince2, Prince2 Agile. Now, the first thing, uh, which I think is going to come to a surprise, particularly those people um, that maybe said that it's sort of command and control, is that Prince2 and this isn't Prince2 Agile, this is Prince2, is already enabled for Agile. The team that worked on Prince2 in 2009 to upgrade it knew Agile was around and they made sure, and the word they used was, they made sure the plumbing was in place to support the Agile way of working. One of the most important structures and concepts in Prince2 is the management stage. Now, if you want to fill your management stages with, say, uh, I don't know, an analysis phase, and then your next stage is a design phase, and then the next stage is a build phase, then you've recreated a waterfall way of working, which you're perfectly liberty to do, and this may be appropriate to your situation. But equally, those management stages could comprise of building a set of features. They could be feature-focused as opposed to a technical stage or a technical uh, sort of focus. So this is where we're saying Prince2 is already enabled for Agile. It's how you apply the framework. The second point is that Prince2 is often seen as a traditional project management approach. And it has a lot of tradition, and it's been around a while, but we have to be very careful with this word traditional. Because often what people mean by traditional is a waterfall, a lot of detail at the outset, and if you like, a command and control structure. Now, if you want to run Prince2 that way, you can, but if you don't want to, then you can run it another way. So you can run Prince2 in a highly command and control way, or you can run it in a highly collaborative way. This is why the people voting earlier, the sort of 20% that said none of the above, I'm hoping this is where you're, you're seeing that Prince2 is a framework, you just apply it and use it however you want to. Prince2 Agile is, not, is for any project, not just IT projects. Now, Agile's heritage is in IT. Most of the, if you like, um, uh, things you read on the web, I'd say 95% of what you read is in an IT context. But I think we're now moving on. And in fact, we're definitely moving on. It's sort of nearly 15 years since our term was created. And this idea of running Agile in a context is now just standard. People are now seeing it as delivering business value or delivering something to the customer. They're not seeing it as an IT thing. Uh, 
So remember, Prince to Agile is for any project, not just IT projects. We do mention the IT only frameworks in Prince to Agile. An example of that would be SAFE. Another example would be XP, which is extreme programming. But because Prince 2 and Prince 2 Agile is for any project anywhere, we only sort of get, they get a passing mention. They're not extensively mentioned. I don't know how many people listening to this will be surprised by this or not. It normally means about a third of people are surprised, but a lot of people think that Agile is actually the same thing as Scrum, and Scrum is Agile. Well, Scrum is Agile, but there's a lot more to Agile than Scrum. So, it, you know, we need to put it in its right context. The two most popular Agile methods out there, or approaches, that you might see if you're, as I say, if you're going to a conference or looking on the internet, are Scrum and Kanban. These two methods, sort of, I would say, take up 91, 92, 93% of everything that you see and read. Scrum is by the most popular. So the Prince to Agile guide has been written with these two as the sort of focus of working in an Agile way. So it tells you how to work with Scrum, how to move between the sort of different roles that Scrum has, and it how to use Kanban um, in your stages and in your sort of time boxes. So as I say, Scrum and Kanban are the most popular, and that is what the guidance majors on. What Prince2 actually sees the term Agile as is a, a sort of a collection of things. It's not just a mindset, it's not just a framework, it's not just a series of techniques. In fact, it's a family of them all. So it's how you behave, it's the frameworks you use, it's some of the underlying concepts that you're using. And a lot of people, when they talk about Agile, are actually just talking about Agile techniques. And this is where our definition of Agile is that we see it as a collection, a family. And I'll go into a bit more detail on that in a moment. And the final thing, uh, which I think may surprise some of you, is that we see Agile as more a case of how much or how little. It's not a binary condition. Too many companies that I go into and work with have, if you like, a decision tree and, oh, we'll run that project waterfall and we'll run that project agile. I think it's dangerous and very limiting uh, thing to do. What you need to uh, think is, you know, we, we can use agile on everything. It's just a question of how much. And some projects are very agile and some will be fairly agile. Uh, but, um, this is how we, we try to do this with, with Prince to Agile. So there's no such thing as a, a sort of yes or no. Now what we have in Prince to Agile is something that's proving very popular called the Agilometer. And it's a question of how agile you can be in certain contexts. And there's a series of questions and uh, some sliders and uh, again, a totally uh, examinable piece of uh, content in the manual. But it, it helps you pitch your agility and level of agileness, for want of a better word, um, to the right place. You need to drive to the conditions. You can't turn up and do full on agile if you've got certain limitations with your, with your sort of project and your environment. So again, there's eight things here, eight bullet points that are really the basics behind what Prince to Agile is built upon. Now, Tom, I'm going to bring you back in here now to run the uh, second poll about what frameworks that people have used and which ones they recognise. So can I uh, go over back to you then, Tom? Sure. Um, and that should be live now, and I can see that people are already starting to respond. So um, it's, uh, it's good news that it's working. Um, again, we'll just give um, everyone uh, a little bit of time to respond. I can see that um, lots are coming in already, which is great. Um, And also, I just want to, um, we've had a couple come in already, but, but please, if you do have any questions for Keith at the end of the session, um, send, send them in, um, and, uh, and we'll uh, look to get those answered. Um, so again, I encourage you to send those in through either the chat box or the Q&A box. Okay, so I'm just going to give people another five seconds to, um, to get their responses started um, before closing the poll. Um, which I'm just going to do now. Um, it's just going to take another uh, 15 seconds or so just to um, uh, collect all those responses. And uh, as with the last one, I will share those um, results once it's just finished um, analyzing them. Just a couple more seconds. 
Okay, so those results should be shared now. Um, yep. Keith, can you see them? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Again, very interesting. Let me have a look there. Okay, so um, I don't know whether you have percentages on your screen. I have the sort of numbers and I have to do the rough maths, but uh, not that many are familiar with the uh, Scrum framework, uh, which is very interesting because it does dominate the whole of uh, the whole of the Agile space. Now, fortunately, on the Prince to Agile course, we spend a lot of time uh, training you and bringing you up to speed in Scrum. Uh, we spend quite a bit of time on it, maybe even as much as a couple of hours. We do exercises on the course that are about Scrum, and in the Prince to Agile guidance is the definitive guide to Scrum in the appendix. So we talked to the people at Scrum and asked them if we could include it in Prince to Agile, and they said yes. So when you go on a Prince to Agile course, you will get trained to quite a good level of what Scrum is. And Bearing in mind it's conceptually quite simple, you can cover a tremendous amount uh, within within a couple of hours. Um, a lot of people uh, have got Kanban, about a third of you are into Kanban. This is very much uh, an advanced agile method at the moment. It, it's seen as flow based. My guess is a lot of you have used it or come across it in a more operational environment. What we do with Prince to Agile is explain how to incorporate that into a project context. So how you put it into your time Kanban is much better at what I would call operational work in terms of that it's natural territory. When you put it in a project context, deadlines. And um, we've been very pleased that David J. Anderson worked with us putting the Kanban information into the Prince2 Agile uh, handbook. So, you know, we've got it from, if you like, the guy who wrote the Kanban method. Um, something like uh, less than 10% into DSDM, Agile PM, Agile PF, which is a similar product. Um, quite a good firm score for Lean Startup. That is probably the most interesting Agile uh, area that I've seen recently. And again, we've incorporated the concepts behind Lean Startup where they have concepts such as the minimum viable product. But we do train you what that is. 90% of people get that a bit wrong. Um, it's very much about learning and validation. But Lean Startup is some fascinating stuff going on at the moment. But to all of you in general, I would make sure you understand Scrum first. Uh, before you start to move on to the other ones. And we've got one person, well done to that one person, you deserve a bun because uh, you've heard of something called Kenevin. It might not look like it's pronounced Kenevin, but it's Kenevin rhymes with Kevin. And again, David Snowden, a leading uh, expert in this area, helped us with the print guidance. And if you do want to look at a couple of videos on Kenevin, I think you'd be very interested at how it's all complexity, you know, what's complex what's complex and what's chaotic. But again, we've incorporated what we believe to be the current thinking of Agile into Prince2 Agile. So thanks for your votes there. And if you are that one person, uh, ping something into the uh, chat box and I'll try and give you a name check later or get Tom to. Right, so we talked about what's in Prince2 Agile. I, I mentioned the sort of family of things. So just to take you around this graphic and explain what it means. Um, the Agile behaviours is something that, to be honest, Prince2 doesn't have. Uh, Prince2 doesn't mind if you use command and control or, you know, collaboration. It doesn't really mind your sort of leadership or your management style. But if you're going to use Agile, you have to be behaving in a certain way. So some of the things we're talking about there are, are things like transparency and collaboration, which I'll come on to in a moment. But it's a set of attitudes and behaviours. What's also in Prince2 Agile is support for all the frameworks that you could possibly have heard of, such as Scrum, Kanban, uh, and many others. The concepts area are, are what makes Agile, Agile. Now, this is quite difficult to get across in a short webinar, but the idea of being iterative and incremental, the idea of prioritizing to hit deadlines, is fundamentally what makes Agile, Agile. Um, if you don't work that way, you're going to be working in a waterfall way. So you've got a choice, waterfall or iterative and incremental. And some of these Agile concepts, as I say, are Agile, Agile. Now, to give an example of, um, to try and uh, emphasize that point, if you look at the techniques area, what we have in Prince2 Agile is around 20 to 25 uh, Agile techniques that are sort of battle-hardened, tested in the real world. So things like burn down charts, things like stand up meetings, retrospectives, um, every sort of standard thing you can think of in Agile, we've put in the techniques area. 
but I'm sure most of you have been in stand-up meetings, a daily meeting of 10 minutes, but you can do that in a waterfall environment if you like. So the techniques don't really make Agile Agile, they're just common techniques that you'll find in the Agile space. The one bubble I haven't mentioned yet is the focus areas. Now the point of the focus areas are to bring things into Prince to Agile that we've got to build on and elaborate on compared to the guidance you'll find in Prince 2. So an example of that might be, well is, things like requirements. We have to go into more detail into how requirements work and user stories, common Agile technique. Um, what we're managing in a Agile context is features, uh, quality criteria, trying to get the, the work done in time, if you like. Uh, so these are extra areas uh, that we have to emphasize because uh, being just a, a generic framework like Prince2 is, it doesn't go into too much detail on, on those. Another area is how to communicate. You know, how do we get fast communication, you know, face-to-face, -face, use visualization, which is fundamental to the Agile way of working. So in terms of what is in Prince2 Agile, Again, it's a family of sort of behaviors, frameworks, concepts, and techniques, plus these focus areas. Um, another focus area would be something like frequent releases, which makes the sort of agile setting, the agile twist, if you like, the twist of lemon that brings Prince to, um, to life in an agile context. I mentioned those behaviors, and these are fundamental to agile. Everywhere you go in agile, they'll talk about ethos, attitude, mindset. And these things are what you need to create and put in place to, an, to allow Agile to work. And Prince2 Agile has identified five key behaviors. If you like, holds on the seven principles of Prince2. You have things like transparency, which is not just visibility. It's actually being honest with people. You know, if you're putting a burn down chart on the wall, that's visibility. Leaving it on the wall doesn't, irrespective of where going well or badly, that's called transparency. Exploration is making sure we're trying to give the customer what they really want and not what they thought they wanted. So iterative and incremental to converge on an accurate solution. Collaboration is fundamental. It's one of the biggest agile words. You have to be collaborative if you want to work in an agile way. If you're prioritizing and trading requirements and dropping something out, bringing something in, you need to have a good relationship between the supplier and the customer. Self-organization is fundamental to Agile. You trust the people at the coalface to get on with the job. Um, now, this is often misunderstood, and there's a lot of guidance in Prince2 Agile to stop you making the classic mistakes, because self-organization is about how a team gets from A to B, and you let the team decide how to get from A to B. But one thing you don't want the team doing is ending up at C. That's called anarchy or self-direction. And a lot of uh, confusion and problems are caused in the Agile space by this. And I think Prince 2 brings a little bit of control and sanity here um, you know, where it's needed. And rich communication, I talked about that earlier. Uh, you know, how do we communicate on an Agile project? Pushing around a lot of email is not a fast way of communicating. One key thing about the behaviors is they need to be managed. The project manager needs to ensure they're happening. You can't just say, this is how we're behaving and hope it happens. You have to proactively get in and make sure these behaviors are actually happening. A quick word about Agile PM, uh, because uh, in, the, in, the, in the poll about 10% 10 10 of people were looking at it. Uh, where does it fit in? Well, it doesn't fit into Prince2 Agile, so it just doesn't. Uh, it's a very common question. Pre-2009, Agile PM plugs some gaps for Prince2, but after 2009, there, there are no gaps to plug. But the choice depends on your situation. Um, Agile KLC, we have a lot of customers who are already using DSDM and Agile PM, and we're not going to tell them to change. But if you're a Prince2 organization, you know, I think it'll be, um, I don't know, it'll be unusual if you went down any other route than Prince2 Agile. And the same applies if you're using other approaches like PMI and such like. Right, to bring the session to a bit of a close, I've just got a, a couple of more main slides to do, and one is about one of the things in Prince2 Agile, uh, which if you like is a reaction to how we've traditionally been brought up in the sort of project space. I went on to um, Google, I don't know, I think this is about 18 months ago, and just typed in project management iron triangle 
went on to images and I, all I could see was triangles, triangles and triangles. And the six triangles that you can see in front of you there uh, took me about two minutes to get those and all six are different. I do find it odd that you represent four things with a triangle. I haven't quite got my head around that, but again, there's triangles everywhere. And the classic triangle is TQC, time, cost and quality. And if you go on a traditional project management course, you'd probably see that triangle you know, within about an hour. That would be one of the earliest slides. Now, Prince 2 Agile, and like many people, we've sort of moved on. And what we've got in Prince 2 Agile is a hexagon. And what we've got with the hexagon is a description of what we fix and what we flex in an Agile context. So on the right hand side, you see don't flex at the top and flex at the bottom. Now, on a training course, this would take about four minutes to an hour to go through. But essentially, what it's to say is that when you work in an Agile context, you fix time and you fix cost over the short term, medium term, and long term. And by that, I mean we're time boxing at the two to four week level. Uh, we're not playing with resources to try and speed things up. Uh, we're looking to um, close those two options off. But what we do play with are things like the features or the scope. So we de-scope things if we're running a bit late. So if we got a, let's say, 100 features to deliver, we might drop two or three out in order to hit the deadline. But that not only helps us hit the deadline, it helps us protect quality and make sure that we've tested everything correctly, um, we've designed it well, we've documented it well. Now, the hexagon is quite advanced. And one of the things that came out in Prince2 Agile and if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, so to speak, of the hexagon, is something called quality criteria. And what we identified is that you know, sometimes you can drop a feature out or bring a feature in. But what we also like doing was maybe downgrading the performance uh, feature in order to, as I say, hit dead and protect quality. So let me give you an example there. A camera needs to work at zero degrees. So if you're talking about um, the for example, it must work at zero degrees, it should work at minus 10, it could work at minus 20. So what we can do with the must, should and could there, which is from the Moscow prioritization system, is that we can vary the quality criteria uh, to, in order, to, in order to, to hit deadlines and protect quality. Now, be very careful here, because the word is quality criteria. We're not talking about the overall quality level which PRINCE2 refers to as CQE or customer quality expectations. Now, I could go into a lot more detail here, but the one really important point I want to leave you with about the hexagon is what we're talking about here is tolerances. So we set zero tolerance for time, zero tolerance for cost, which is typically in the form of resources. Therefore, if you're forecast to exceed a deadline or forecast to need more resources, you immediately go into exception. Agile is very much about on time and very much about prioritization. Uh, again, some of the detail I can't quite go into in the timescales, but we need the customer on board to help us with that prioritization. So things like being on time, prioritizing, customer involvement, fundamental to Agile. It's the Agile way of working. If you don't have to hit a deadline, then you know maybe we don't need to use Agile. But that's the heck of what you fix and what you flex. And sometimes I've heard people calling it the flexagon. But again, something there'll be a lot of exam questions on in the uh, Princeton exam. And remember, one quick thing about the exam, practitioner level only. All the questions are either what are called level three or level four, um, which are harder scenario-based questions. There are no level one questions in the exam. And an example of a level one question would be something like, what is the highest mountain in the world? So. To conclude, is Prince 2 Agile a challenge? And the answer is quite simply, uh, if my screen will move on, or is it now frozen? Yes, it is a challenge. And the reason it's a challenge is because, like anything in life, if something's easy, then you know it's very, it's um, you know, if, if the solution's easy, the question's probably easy. Uh, for those sort of um, nearly half of you that know Scrum, Scrum is conceptually very simple because what it's doing is quite easy, namely ordering a to-do list and getting things into batches and organizing your work that way. I'm a great fan of Scrum, but you know, if you can describe Scrum in pages, it's not that complicated. Whereas running an agile project uh, with Prince2, with distributed teams, 
um, several teams, a lot of complexity, you know, that's difficult. Therefore, this is going to be, uh, if you like, comprehensive. So, Prince 2 Agile, um, it's, uh, as I say, it's, it's not something you can learn in five hours. Um, and um, I'm just trying to manage your expectations. It's not blindingly hard, but it is something you really need to get your, your head around and think very carefully. When blending Prince 2 with Agile, what we're trying to do is play to the strengths of the two, if you like, partners in the marriage. Prince 2 is very good at project direction. It's very good at project management. Uh, but it doesn't cover product delivery whatsoever. Whereas Agile has been born out of IT product delivery. And now as it's evolved, it's product delivery in general, and it's now trying to grow up and grow out into more complex situations. And it's doing so very successfully. But what we're trying to do is blend, and the key word is blend. We're trying to get Agile ways of thinking up into Prince2, and we're trying to get some of the Prince2 thinking down into the Agile layer where it is needed. So a lot of governance already in Agile, but when you're running, if you like, multi-team scenarios with a lot of complex parts, you know, Prince2 brings something to the party. Example of what I'm looking at, if you take the top layer, project direction, if you have like a project board, you know, what sort of project board are they? Are they happy to go into a team room, look at all the information on the wall, and all the information out that tells them the status of the stage or a work package. You know, are they okay to pull information or do they need a formal report once a week? Well, the former is an agile thinking project board. The latter is a more traditional. So this is what these arrows are trying to do. And this is known as the sort of Axelos cake where we're blending the mixture. It's the same mixture, if you like. It's just uh, putting in the, um, these special sort of ingredients. So I'm now going to come to the final slide. So I want you to be thinking about some questions to send through to Tom. And then Tom's going to read them to me, and I'm going to try and answer them on the fly. I don't mind how difficult or how easy they are. Um, it could be, you know, the, the proverbial might sound like a silly question, but I'm sure it won't be. So get your questions going into Tom. And I'll leave you with just this final slide, which is really talking about uh, is perfect marriage. If you want to be agile, you want to respond to your customers' needs, uh, you want to respond to change very quickly, you want to quality, you know, how are you going to do this? And, and what you've got on the screen is a picture of the Eurofighter Typhoon. If you go onto the internet and look about it, it will tell you that the plane is fundamentally unstable. It is to be unstable. But by being unstable, it can turn quickly. But despite being able to sort of turn quickly and be unstable, you know, the only way you're going to achieve that and the only way you're going to keep that plane in the air is with good governance and good control. So don't see agility in complex environments meaning less control, less governance. Uh, I would suggest it's the opposite. If you want to be able to be, you know, very uh, responsive and, and turn on a sixpence or a dime or a euro, you know, you need to um, you need to have good governance and good control in place. And this is what I think Prince2 brings to the Agile space. And this is what the product of Prince2 Agile is trying to achieve. Tom, I'm going to go over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Keith. Um, very interesting presentation. Um, so we've had we've had quite a few questions come in already, um, but uh, please don't um, let that put you off uh, sending in any more. Um, so the first one, um, I think it's actually, well, I think, uh, Keith, you'll probably be able to answer the first part, and then, uh, John, I'm going to revert the second part of the question to yourself. Um, so, uh, Keith, you, um, uh, they'd like to uh, understand a bit more about the, um, the course um, and how it can be used in a business context. Um, and then, John, um, I don't know if you could pick up after Keith, um, uh, would it be possible to get some blurb um, to maybe take away and digest on, on this? Um, Business context is really important uh, because that is what the, the course is, is geared to, to, to be. And by that, I mean it's not an IT course. Um, a lot of Agiles come from IT, um, and you know, a lot of, uh, which is fair enough. That's where its heritage is. But what the course is going to teach you is just not an IT thing. It's going to talk about your customer, your supplier, and how you, how you actually deliver uh, value. You, you meet the business case. You, you deliver what you're supposed to deliver. So it's very much, um, I would say, 
because uh, I, I see the word business and customer as mutually uh, interchangeable. So it's very much a business focused course. Um, depending on how your training organizations run it, it's got a lot of practical exercises in it. Um, and there's three days and um, it's the, the, the theory behind the boilerplate training course was the fact that it's very much sort of learn by doing. And I, you know, I, I'm sure people sure to uh, um, vacate this, but you don't really want death point on this and that's why there's so many practical exercises in the course to, to help you learn. I hope that answers and over to over to John. Anybody there? Hi, yes, sorry, we're just trying to uh, unmute myself. I'll um I'll just uh, hand over to uh, my colleague, uh, Lucia, uh, who can uh, elaborate a bit more on that. Uh, but perhaps what we can do is um, uh, make sure we actually um, get a, uh, the question read out loud for us again, if possible. Tom? Sorry, I was on mute there. <laughs> Um, so the, the first part of the um, question which, which Keith just covered was, um, could you cover in more depth um, uh, what, what uh, or in a bit more detail around the course and um, how it can be used in a business context um, and would it be possible to have some blurb or more information um, that uh, can be taken away and digested internally? Okay, so uh, thanks for that. Uh, Lucia, we'll give you some blurb on the course uh, itself. Okay, perfect. And, and just in terms of the, um, we've had a sort of slightly related question, um, which I think we can probably just, um, or you can cover off, um, is around uh, lots of questions around uh, where can you get the manual, uh, how much is it, um, how much is the course, how much is the exam, all that sort of stuff. So um, I think uh, probably um, the, the email address on, on the slide um, at the bottom there is, is probably a, a great source of, uh, you can get all the information you need there, but I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to, to add to that, John. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Lucia would like to tell us a bit more about the course itself. Otherwise, uh, as uh, Tom said, uh, for more information, you know, people can visit our website. But uh, perhaps Lucia can give us a, a brief overview of this. Um, uh, okay, uh, in regards to training, um, I think it would be best for uh, interested parties to go and visit our uh, page with our accredited organizations who can deliver training according to um, its uh, companies or uh, individual needs, because uh, apparently its uh, training organization is delivering uh, according to their own standards um, and uh, demands. Uh, but, um, if uh, you would like uh, more information on uh, the exam, uh, we do have information available on our website. And also, if you could direct uh, uh, any questions uh, to the email address shown at the bottom, communication at peoplesearch.org, uh, we will ensure we'll uh, get back to you straight away. Okay, great. Thank, thanks, Luke, here and John. Um, so this one is for you, Keith. Um, do you need to be knowledgeable on Scrum, uh, Basic Agile, to understand Prince2 Agile better? No, you do not. It's not a prerequisite. I think the more you know, the better you will pick things up. So I would say it is not essential, but it is an advantage. And um, if you're limited, go for Scrum. Um, then maybe look at Kanban. If you're very uh, keen to do some pre-work, then look at things like Lean Startup and Kinevin. Okay, great. Um, quite an interesting question here. Um, so if Prince2 Agile is for all projects or, or truly generic, as, as I think the, the Prince2 core manual um, um, states, um, can it be used in industries uh, that aren't generally associated um, with agile way, agile way of working, um, such as construction? Um, and if it can, uh, how? Um, great question. Um, I, I think I'll be I'll be straight from day one on on the construction question. Construction is an incredibly mature. Um, you know, we've been building things since the pyramids and before. So construction is incredibly mature. And it might be, this is where the agileometer comes in, it might be that you can only use some of the agile approaches and ideas in the construction situation. A lot depends on the relationship between a customer and a supplier. A lot depends on whether there's any sort of a variability in the scope. 
Um, I, I, by a fluke, I managed to run into someone who was a very had a very prominent position on the building of the Shard, which is the tallest building in London. And I asked him about Agile and whether you can be Agile, and he said you absolutely can be. So he was um, very much in favour of it. Now, can we build a um, sort of skyscraper incrementally over time? You know, I'm not so sure. I think you would have to, um, you know, get your foundations in a good place to start with. Um, I've recently been out to China, and, I, and I, I mentioned this point. I said we can still use a lot of this in a construction environment, but perhaps not so much. And someone uh, out there said, "Well, we build bridges incrementally over here anyway." Well, I was thinking, "Well, you can't really build three quarters of a bridge." But what he meant was that you could build one lane, and then build a second lane, then you can hang like two lanes on the side. Um, they were very innovative in how they were in construction projects. Now, construction is is one is the far end of the extreme, and I still think you can use a lot of agile there. Thing in between, all the way across to IT, it just gets easier and easier for agile. I'm working with marketing companies, uh, working with a lot of county councils, district councils, who are just loads and loads of um, event projects, and they're nothing to do with um, IT whatsoever. So it's by degree. The short answer is some is a lot easier than others, but don't see this as a yes no. Um, and I, I think the construction. Uh, I was dealing with someone recently on a bio biochemistry, I think it was, and um, you know DNA testing and all this. And, and it's amazing how much you can actually just bring into um, the, the way you're working with some of the agile concepts. But just remember, it's a question of how much, uh, not a question of yes or no. Okay, great. Thanks, Keith. Um, so we've had one question come in around uh, what's the prerequisite. To, to take the, the qualification. Um, so just to sort of cover that off, um, you do need to have um, a, a current um, Prince2 practitioner um, certification. And so if, if it has uh, lapsed, you, you need to take and re-reg. Um, a new addition to, to the prerequisite um, is uh, if you took Prince2 um, sort of before uh, over five, you know, five years ago, but um, hold a current Axelos Professional Development Digital Badge, then that is also um, uh, allowed to take the, the Prince2 Agile um, uh, Practitioner Certification. Um, so, Keith, just uh, another question for you. Um, how do you implement um, Prince2 Agile um, in the program management environment? Well, first off, Prince2 Agile is so it's aimed at projects. Um, you can, um, you, you know, you can't use it on a program. However, your program will consist of lots and lots of projects, lots and lots of business as usual work. So your program office, the people in charge of at that level, need to know what Prince2 Agile is and how it clips in. They may have some some things to say on particular projects that really they need to be done in an agile way. If we can't do it in a linear way. It, it, it won't work. Now, one side issue I personally have with program level agile is that things move so slowly at a program level, and I mean that relatively. Please don't, uh, I don't want any abuse coming in on the question boxes, but it's relatively slow, and I'm not so sure how much agile you can use at the program level. But sure enough, if you're at the program level and you're trying to coordinate things, you need to know, you know, what agile is and how it works. Um, and I think one good example is actually getting things to line up. If you're trying to line up different work streams and you're using Agile, these things will come in on time if the Agile way of working. So program is program level. Um, and, um, you know, as I say, just, just well, I wouldn't use Prince2 Agile to actually uh, work, um, you know, on a program, but you certainly need to know what it is. That. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so the, the next question is, um, in, in Prince2 and Prince2 Agile, the output always, is always named a, as a product. Um, how, or can you offer any advice on how this uh, could be integrated um, with ITIL, um, where it talks a lot around delivering a service instead of necessarily a, a product? Okay, first things first, I'm not an expert in ITIL, okay? Um, but a project delivers a product, and a product goes into service. Therefore, um, this is when ITIL, if you like, takes over. And it might be if you have a series of minor amendments and enhancements, you handle it in ITIL, and you don't handle it in a sort of project context. Again, Agile is very good in this in this in this space. When you have a service, you have you know 
bugs coming in or requests for change or improvements, you know, just handling it to an existing service. But what you've got there is a product that already exists and you're providing a service with it. The project domain is about creating that initial product. Now, it might find that in the ITEL environment, you've got something very complicated, a series of really complex enhancements, and you might decide to run that as a project. So to me, Prince2, Prince2 Agile creates a product, hands it over into service, into operations, into the live environment, and that is where ITIL can take over. But having a connection between the two um, uh, is, is very important. This is where we're throwing it over the wall and thinking down the line about what the operational considerations are, something that we talk about in Prince2 Agile, because it's very easy to just build something and test it and you haven't actually thought about the people downstream, people that are using it, people supporting it, and the people who've got to actually cut the thing over. Okay, great. Um, so we've had one question coming around. Um, are there any best practices or case studies um, available of how an organization's used it? So I'd say, um, obviously, as, as Keith said um, uh, at the beginning of the session, it, it's, it's only very newly released. Um, we do have a, a video case study of how the uh, Axlos.com website was delivered um, using Prince to Agile, which is in the case study section of, of Axlos.com. So I, I would check that out. I don't know, Keith, if you had um, any uh, sort of you know anecdotes that you could share with us. Um, not really. In using sort of agile in a project context for a long time, so I've seen 101 um, you know situations. And funnily enough, you're, you're you're right there, Tom, because it's so new. We've only just got about you know one, two, or three case studies going over at the moment. I think we've yeah. given the context as well. So uh, watch watch this space on that. Um, but uh, you, the, the thing you're looking for is if you like project project style agile, and um, where you know you go from scratch, set some. You know, clear yeah. business case, clear end date. Yeah, I, th I think I think it's very important to say we are actively seeking to, to publish as many case studies on Prince to Agile next year as possible. Uh, it's definitely a, a priority for us. So, yeah, as Keith said, watch this space. Um, we, we have also had um, a couple of questions come in around translations and and, and language requirements uh, for for the. Uh, both the guidance uh, publication and also the exams themselves. Um, so. Uh, the, the, it is only available in, in English at the moment. Um, we are looking um, at uh, all, all you know, uh, possible languages, um, and it's something we're working with our partners on in terms of prioritizing those. Um, sorry, I, I, the exam is also available in German. Um, it's not, not just in English, sorry, correct myself. Um, but we are looking at, um, at our uh, sort of translation strategy, and, uh, and it's, it's definitely on our radar. So again, I would watch this space. Um, if, you, if you do have any thoughts on that, then, then please do send them in to, um, to, to me, or you can see my email address on the slide there. Um, so we've had a, a question coming, Keith, um, which I, I think is quite, quite an interesting one. Um, how do companies actively analyze, hire the right people with Prince to Agile? Um, for example, a candidate to pass the exam may not show the right behaviors or agile ability in comparison to a candidate who has the practical agile ability and expertise? Um, I would go with the person who's, uh, who you like and has got the real expertise. Um, and uh, Axelos and people sort of might, might, might not want me to say this, but I think deep down everybody knows that it's um, getting a qualification is only a badge. The point being, though, is that this badge shows um, a level that you've attained. This is why the this is why the exam is not easy to pass. It, um, there's so many qualifications out there that are so easy to get that it doesn't really mean anything. Some of the people who are going around saying they're certified Scrum Masters never even took an exam. Now, what we're trying to do with Prince to Agile is set some bar to say that you've achieved at least some sort of standard, and it's not easy and it's not easy to pass. Now, um, it's like any exam, it just means you passed an exam, but it doesn't mean you've been in a training course, it doesn't mean that your company has been accredited by people like PeopleCert and the actual companies that work with them. Um, you know it's going to be on message, you do know that you've 
actually been on a quality product and to me it shows a statement of intent and I would pick someone with Prince2 Agile over someone who didn't have it um, if everything else was everything else was equal but it's 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 only part of the picture I think it's an important part but it is only it's, it is only one part and therefore if you saw someone who was just just sounding better seemed to demonstrate all the right behaviors um, yes you can pass the exam and not be able to behave in the right way in the real world but I think that is something that um, you look at the experience you interview the person um, but as I say personally I think if someone had a Prince 2 Agile qualification it's going to do them a lot of good and certainly isn't going to do them any harm it's going to maybe get you into certain situations you wouldn't have got into before um, I think the last 10-15 years if you're a project manager without Prince 2 you um, you know you've you're making your life a lot harder for yourself are you making it impossible no does that mean you're not a good project manager no it just means that life's going to be a lot harder and as I say the key thing I'd like the message would be it shows a level of intent and it shows a genuine qualification to pass something that's got quite a high standard to get through okay great um so we, I just noticed that we've, we've uh, just gone past the hour. Um, I, I think we've got time for um, one more question. Um, but Tom, uh, I'm quite happy to carry on for one or two more if you want. I know people might have to get off because they've got meetings. but. Um. Cool. Um, yeah, no, and, and, and we obviously do appreciate that if, if you do have to get off. Um, we, we have had um, a couple of questions come in. I just wanted to um, reconfirm that we are recording today's session um, and we'll be making that available in the next couple of days. So um, watch out for an email from, from PeopleCert um, on that. Um, so the, the, the question I wanted to ask you was, uh, is there an easy way to help a customer understand what they have to do to cooperate and play their part in an Agile project? Uh, so many hear about Agile, want to do it, but don't realize what it truly means they must commit um, to, to to make it happen, make it a reality. No, it's a great. That's a great question because um, it's a, it's a bit like a, a I don't know a leg on a chair. Without your customer involvement, um, you, you you are in a bit of trouble. Um, the key the key um, attitude, the key thing is to educate and inform. So you've got to explain what their role is. Explain that okay, they might not get everything, but they're getting it on time. They're getting it well built, and we can handle changes as we go along. It is a very proposition for the customer but got to understand it I always say that if you got me in a room with a customer for 45 minutes I could convince them uh, not in 10 minutes though therefore um, you know attending if you like awareness sessions or going on a training course and, and one key thing here is that a lot of people from the customer domain the business domain you know when they go on these agile courses you know, like Prince to Agile, they think it's going to be techno speak, and it just isn't. Uh, within two hours, they realise that they're a fundamental part of this. So the answer to the question is, uh, train them up, or get them awareness, or inform them. Don't sell them the idea. Uh, you just need to say what it is. And I would suggest that 99% of customers and business people will say, I like the sound of this. And the 1% have normally got some sort of baggage somewhere that something's happened um, that they won't agree to anything. But um, train them, inform them, uh, but don't sell to them. Uh, they are a vital component to get as work. Okay, great. So I think, I think we've got um, one, one more question um, to, to ask. Um, which is sort of, I think I've, I'm, I'm wrapping up a couple of questions into one here, um, but uh, could, could Agile or, or is Prince2 Agile um, considered as an add-on to Prince2 or are both the same level um, as a standalone framework? So I think it'd be useful if you could sort of clarify that, that point. Um, be careful with wording here. I think the simple answer is to say it is an add-on. Prince2 is Prince2 and we're not taking anything out of Prince2 or switching anything off. What we're doing is providing Prince2 Agile, which if you like is an extension of the tailoring chapter in Prince2. It tells you how to tailor it, how to configure it, how to blend it with Agile. So um, I'm sort of okay with the word add-on, but it's not something you sort of bolt on the side. Um, you know, you need to know your Prince2, Prince2 Agile then uh, explains how to configure all of the all of the elements of Prince2, such as the tolerances, you know, how how you how you would do your reporting and such like. So it's telling you how to how to tailor it. Um, 
it's um, I don't know words are interesting here but you could say you know integration blend um, complementary add-on that that's the way that uh, Prince 2 Agile works in relation to Prince 2 yeah I, th I think that the point on tailoring is particularly sort of is, is guidance on on how to tailor um, Prince 2 in an agile context I think would you agree yes yeah okay great um, okay, so uh, thank you um, everyone for joining today. Uh, thank you, Keith, for presenting, and, and, and thank you uh, to our partners, uh, PeopleSet, um, who we're delighted to be um, hosting this session with. Um, so thank you, Keith, and thank you, John, and Luke thank here. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John, and thanks, Tom, and thank you, everyone, for attending. All right, cheers.